Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, combining tradition and technology to prevent calf respiratory disease. Plus, how some Texas operations are using a sustained nutrition program to ride out the drought. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Ochsner. Thanks for joining us. Topping this week's cattle industry news, the Senate is expected to vote on an amendment to the Clean Water Act. That could be good news for cattlemen. It would defund the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers' attempt to expand its jurisdiction under the Clean Water Act. Currently, the Clean Water Act often qualifies agricultural ditches as tributaries and impacts the definition of navigable waters. It's something NCBA says is a very serious concern to our industry. Any change to that definition and expanding of what qualifies as the water of the United States will obviously affect how many people have to get permits under all these different programs. That takes a lot of money, and it also takes a lot of time to get through. So what you can have happen is producers who want to build a home on their property or build a barn or move that ditch, all of those activities now, if all these waters come under the jurisdiction of the federal government, you're going to be looking to spend tens of thousands of dollars to go through the permitting process, and you may not even get a permit so there are some things happening in Washington, D.C., where our members can make a difference. So call your senators, let them know generally how you feel on the issue, and that the definition of waters of the United States should not be expanded. You can make a difference in Washington on issues like this one by becoming a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Call us at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us at beefusa.org. Enforcement of the Federal Clean Water Act is already having an impact on many operations across the country. And joining me in the studio is Joe Stanko, a producer from Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Welcome to the show, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. You know, a lot of people know of Steamboat as being a ski country uh, destination, but there's a lot of ranching that goes on in Steamboat. Tell us a little bit about your operation. We've been in the same air, uh, on the same land since 1907. We're, we're small. We're cow-calf producer. We evolved. And uh, we're uh, Leopold Conservation Award winners. And uh, my husband and I now do it all ourselves and have since our son decided to go off to college and get a life of his own. <laughs> so we're, since 1988. So we've been doing it alone uh, since that time. He comes home when he can. Outstanding. Well, tell us just a little bit about your recent experience with the Clean Water Act. You have an interesting story. Well, we, were, we have a, a situation where we, I'm afraid to say, in this day and age have a lot of water <laughs> and so many people don't right so we have a schedule of trying to develop at least one new spring every year and uh, a couple of years ago we were doing using equip mm -hmm. money and a regulation that we'd never had before came that said that we had to get approval by the army corps of engineers mm. he came out and visited we gave him maps he looked at it and he discovered a puddle about the size of a car <laughs> and about the depth where my friend's horse from Texas would walk right through it because he didn't recognize it as water. Wow. And we had to totally revamp where we drilled and where we ran uh, the pipe in order to uh, build that spring. And the result was it cost us an additional $5,000, which, of course, the equip didn't cover. And what was his concern around that puddle? His, his concern about the puddle was, first of all, that it was wetlands. Yeah. And second of all, that if it were to flood, it would eventually drain into the drainage of uh, what we call a cow creek. I see. So this cost you more, both in terms of time and in terms of money. Right. He was. There's only one place that you can get Army Corps of Engineers from the Western Slope, right. and that's from Grand Junction. So you have to wait and schedule so you can't get it done in a timely fashion. Wow. Tell us this before you go. Why would you say people should be members of their state and or national cattlemen's organization? I know you've been very actively involved. Right. I, the, the state, if you're going to be part of anything, you need to be a part of all the levels. Sure. Okay. The state keeps you abreast of the local issues, the state issues, the legislative mm -hmm. issues, the, the different things that are going around on different parts of the state. The national 
not only keeps you abreast of the national issues that are going on, mm -hmm. but they also are able to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And they do it quickly. I would not have been aware of the, um, the Forest Service mm -hmm. taking water rights mm -hmm. in the state of Colorado without these. I'm busy. Yeah. And on, I can get right on my computer. I can know what's going on immediately. I don't have to go search it out. It's there for me. That's great. Well, thank you for your active involvement. Thank you for sharing your story. Sure. Happy to. This is a great example of what your state and national cattlemen's organizations are working on each and every day. Join us by calling 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us at beefusa.org. No doubt regulations are a part of the 2012 Farm Bill discussion. More from the Hill in this week's Cattlemen's Capital Concerns. Well, the next Farm Bill is going to be a real challenge. Farm Bills always are, but this one will be particularly a real challenge because of the fact that we do not have the kind of resources here at the federal government that have been available in the past. We're running trillion dollar deficits year after year. This is the third year in a row that that's happened. This year we borrowed about 40% of all of the um, uh, money that was spent by the federal government and all that is being borrowed against our children and grandchildren's future. Farmers understand that that's a part of this problem and I think increasingly they understand that we have got to write a different farm bill that promotes uh, competition and that promotes uh, doing some of the things that old farm bills do to pr protect against risk in a different way. Uh, my concern probably as any cons anybody on the Ag Committee would, would tell you is that we want to make sure that the Ag Committee is in fact consulted as cuts are made and as the uh, Super Committee deliberates that they don't inordinately cut agriculture. But uh, it is going to force the Ag Committee to write a farm bill at a time when probably they didn't want to and uh, it's probably not going to look like we want it to look. But um, I think farmers and ranchers across the country are uh, understand and are willing to chin the bar, uh, but I think it's fair to ask everybody else and, and not just to single out ag producers inordinately. The Joint Select Committee uh, is currently considering some changes that might force us to, um, uh, to uh, uh, write the farm bill quicker than we might otherwise have, uh, have done. Uh, that's yet to be determined. Uh, the one constant in all of this is uh, the message that Frank Lucas and I and others are pitching to our leadership speaker is that whatever changes are made in the Farm Bill, those changes need to be done uh, by the Ag Committee itself uh, to come in on an ad hoc basis or uh, allow folks who don't really understand the overall impact of, of the safety net that is the Farm Bill uh, and have them make uh, you know, some unilateral uh, changes in it. And our view is wrong policy, bad policy. Yeah, that's a part of preparing for the next Farm Bill is really is, I think, taking the temperature, talking with the, the people on the ground, the farmers, the ranchers, uh, the, our academic folks, our Department of Agriculture people. And we've been doing that. And, uh, and under Chairman Lucas's di direction and leadership in the 112th Congress, we've been doing these um, uh, Farm Bill audits where you take each title of the Farm Bill and we bring in uh, all the, the agencies that are responsible for implementation of those titles. And, and frankly, we require them to do a thorough self-evaluation that they return to us first. So we have all this information to work with and then we bring them in and we talk about it in a hearing format. So we have done really uh, uh, great due diligence in preparing for the next Farm Bill. I'm, I'm pleased to see that it's going to happen in 2012. You know, the farm bill we traditionally know is something sometimes it's a can that gets kicked down the road. I, I don't think that's going to occur at this point, and frankly, this select committee may, uh, uh, you know, there may or may not be uh, parts of the farm bill we, we deal with in, uh, this year yet before 2012. Make your voice heard in Washington, D.C. Visit our website at beefusa.org and click on Call to Action. Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To prevent respiratory diseases, I'd, I'd say the number one thing would be the vaccination program. A customized program that keeps calves healthy and profitable on one Colorado operation. Plus, how a ranch enduring the drought is extending its cattle forage with a sustained nutrition program. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD TV. Draxon. 
clearly Cattlemen's number one choice to fight BRD. Here's why. Nothing is more depressing in a stalker business as the doctor and doctor. And you still have your chronics, you still have your death loss. And with Drax, and we just found out, that, especially with microplasts, you just had to be there to see the results. And the evidence backs up what most cattlemen already know. Draxon cuts chronics and mortalities by 70%. So talk to your veterinarian and check the online calculator at Draxon.com. You'll see, nothing gives you more for your money when you're fighting BRD. Just a great antibiotic. Very, very effective. Don't let the price tag scare you. It's a no-brainer. You just use it. Do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Please visit Draxon.com or call 1-888-DRAXON for more information. When it comes to versatility on your operation, nothing beats a John Deere D-Series skid steer. They're not only great for cleaning and feed chores, but with John Deere Worksite Pro attachments, you can tackle just about any job thrown your way. You asked for versatility, and John Deere delivered. These rock-solid machines are built to last. See your dealer today. Welcome back. Calf respiratory disease is an animal health concern that all operations face. In fact, it's the most prevalent disease in pre-weaning and weaning age calves. And it can cost producers a lot in terms of both time and money. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Gary Foster takes us to Elizabeth, Colorado to see how one ranching operation is using both tradition and technology to help prevent calf respiratory disease. I was born and raised right here, been here all my life, and now I'm raising my family here. Just 45 miles southeast of Denver is Running Creek Ranch, the largest registrar of limousine seed stock in the country. And ranch manager Joey Friend believes in everything the limousine breed has to offer. Limousine's a breed that originated out of France. We first fell in love with the limousine breed there in 1980 because of their efficiency, their muscle, their yield. Uh, their overall carcass qualities. Running Creek Ranch spends a lot of time and energy on genetics, and it's something they believe is extremely important in order to have a successful operation. We're always real proactive in the genetic line, everything from DNA research, trying new sires, feeding research. We do feed cattle out ourselves and take the carcass evaluation and put it back to the cows. Even with high-end genetics, Joey says it's the mix of tradition and technology that give Running Creek Ranch the upper edge. We'll spend the most we can for the best genetics that we can put into these cattle, but we feel that we don't have to have the highest, most expensive equipment to do the feeding. We feel it's more economical to use a team of horses to feed our cattle with. It's more enjoyable. Oy! They're steeped in tradition, and yet they're absolutely embracing technology for the future. That's a very interesting dance. They're doing it very well. A strong calf respiratory prevention program is also another way they keep their herd top notch. To prevent respiratory diseases, I'd say the number one thing would be the vaccination program. Joey relies heavily on Jim Martin, owner of Colorado Animal Health, to help ensure his animal health program is as strong as it can be, as well as to provide advice on the best products available. Colorado Animal Health was started 34 years ago. I became acquainted with the Friend family shortly after starting Colorado Animal Health. And through the years, we've developed a very positive and good relationship. It is the type of relationship that you really put a value on. We buy all our health products from Colorado Animal Health. Jim Martin came to us and said, hey, this new Vista product, I think it's really good. So we tried it. And Jim's always been good to get us in the right direction and treated us well, making sure that we have the best vaccination program that we can have. With Jim's guidance, Running Creek Ranch started using Vista when it first became available. We used Vista years ago and got along great with it. It was off the market for a while 
And as soon as it came back, we went right back to it because we felt it was a quality product and we feel that it's going to keep away all the evils of any respiratory problems in the future. They pulled the Vista off of the market and we tried substituting some products to replace Vista once and wasn't near as successful. When Vista got to be available again, we were both very happy about it. It is a product that makes your relationship with your customers even more solid. It's a quality product. Now that Vista is back on the market, Joey believes he has a much healthier group of calves. We keep close eye on how many calves we pull and treat and doctor. We definitely seen an improvement over that first year. The calves at weaning time, they wean better. We had less sickness and less overall respiratory problems. We eliminated much of the summer pneumonia treating out in the pasture. We eliminate a lot of the stress on the calves. It is a very smooth vaccine. And by using Vista once, we don't knock them off feed. They're, they're not going through a sweat and they respond very well. Joey says the cost of not using a product like Vista as part of his operations animal product health protocol is extremely high. It's easily over $20 an animal when you have to give them an antibiotic shot. So we have the cost of the, the antibiotic, the labor cost, the transportation, and the overall time. So to put a value on that is really hard. I'm sure it would be $100 a head or more. We'll head back to Colorado for more on preventing calf respiratory disease right after this. I'm looking forward to having Vista once back. We weren't able to find an equivalent product. I think our practice will be very quick to adopt Vista when it comes back. All of my veterinary colleagues have all talked about the product coming back. We're glad to have Vista back in the product line. Cattlemen that we work with will be glad to have the product. We have a lot of producers. They're excited about it coming back. Yeah, can I recommend Vista once? Yeah, that's going to go right back in the cooler and uh, it goes right back in the cans. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right, where it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real and feeding my family home-cooked meal that's important to me that's important to me and planting the garden and watching it grow welcome back let's return to reporter Gary Foster who's learning more about ways to prevent calf respiratory disease According to Dr. Sybil, Vista is actually the top choice for ranching operations across the country because of the extensive research that's been done on the product. It's still the product of choice for a great majority of people that use vaccinations. It is tried and true science. It continues to be researched to enhance it going forward. And at the end of the day, it is the fullest protection possible in a dose of vaccine for the cattle. While every operation has a personalized vaccination program, the Vista line of products is unique in the way it can be customized to meet an operation's specific needs. Vista and the line of products in the Vista line gives you all kinds of options to better personalize the operation. So, you know, if you need Vista once, we have it. If you need one or two of the viruses, we have it. If you need a breeding program, we have it. So at the end of the day, the family of Vista products allows for great personalization of the operation that you're trying to give advice to. I really like Vista once, not just because it's effective, but we can give one shot instead of giving two shots to obtain the same objective, same protection. Vista works, that's why I'm satisfied with it. I'm not a scientist, but I know Vista works. I've seen it improve many producers' 
operation. In addition to helping meet an operation's specific animal health needs, Vista also has other unique qualities that many producers find invaluable. We have modified live viruses in Vista. We also have the avirulent cultures for Pasteurella and Mannheimia. And that's an interesting challenge, if you will, for the scientists, because we know that Pasteurella is a big, big deal in respiratory disease in cattle. And our avirulent cultures bring technologies that we believe creates a profound immune system and the best immune response that we can get in cattle that are being vaccinated. The technology that we're exploring at multiple levels includes technologies to bring stronger, better, more effective Pasteurella and Mannheimia vaccines to the cattle business. Having a good calf respiratory vaccination program in place not only helps Running Creek Ranch keep their animals healthy, but it also provides them with the reassurance that their cattle are going to stay healthy after they leave the operation. Overall, animal health protocol. I guess we'd start at birth. Calves are born, they're tagged and tattooed. And then when the calves are about 45 days to 60 days old, they will be brought in and they will be branded. They will be vaccinated with Vista once, in addition to the seven-way vision product. When the calves are about six months old, we will sort the calves off the cows and give them a pre-weaning shot. This year we used the uh, uh, Vista once and then we gave him a Vision 7 with Somnus vaccination. Dr. Sybil says vaccination programs are just one piece of the puzzle, and it's important to remember the other factors required to have a healthy and productive herd. It requires proper nutrition. It requires proper genetics. It requires proper colostrum. It requires proper management and herdsmanship. And then at the end of the day, it requires a good product like Vista to complement everything else that's been done well. Diagnostics is also an important way to track what's working and what's not in the herd. So you need to periodically look at some of the responses to vaccination using blood tests. The animals that get sick on the operation, you need to know why they got sick. And is this a trend or is this an individual just having a problem? That all goes into the equation to understand the personal need in an operation. At the end of the day, Running Creek Ranch utilizes all the tools available to keep their operation going strong, and that includes collaborating with other producers and animal health representatives to continuously find new ways to make their operation even more successful. I'm impressed with Running Creek in how over the years they've continued to seek out folks that are good collaborators in their operation. And it's so impressive when you see operations build on year after year after year of good information. And they're pushing the folks that are giving them advice to get better. And they're asking, are there other folks out there that can help us? And then they filter all that information out and they apply it on a daily basis. Joey and his family's desire to grow and evolve Running Creek Ranch will keep the operation running strong and long into the future. Reporting from Running Creek Ranch in Elizabeth, Colorado, I'm Gary Foster for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Now to learn more about Vista and other products from Merck Animal Health, visit our website at cattleman cattleman.org. We'll be right back. Face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand, but at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls, never-ending chores, the unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W, trusted. So why do you care if your cattle are source and age verified? Better yet, do you think the housewife cares? Well, 70% of consumers surveyed want to know where their food comes from. So where do you start? With this little green ear tag. IMI Global's the seal of approval that stands behind the beef you produced. IMI is engaged in source and age verification from the cow man to the kitchen table. So if you're ready to start, just ask us. IMIGlobal.com Let us know what you think. Visit our website at cattleman cattleman.org. Just take the online survey in the month of November, and one lucky participant will win a free registration to the 2012 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. We're excited about the young people that will be joining us once again this year for our annual meeting in Nashville. And we have a great agenda in store for them. 
Joining me in the studio is Lori Liddicote, Senior Manager of Association Marketing. Lori, thanks for coming to the show. Thank you. Well, first of all, just tell us what some of the activities and events uh, there will be for, uh, for these students who join us in Nashville. Well, sure. Um, we're encouraging all young people to come to the annual convention, but NCBA is enticing them with a number of youth competitions. Well, and tell us specifically how many competitions and what kind of competitions are we talking about? Well, we've got four competitions. First is public speaking, team marketing, beef quiz bowl, and last is our cattle judging contest. Yeah, my girls particularly like that one last year. I and know that for sure. And they did quite well. <laughs> well, talk to folks about some of the specific rules. I mean, what does it take to be eligible if young people want to compete? Sure. Um, first, let me say that all of the rules and information on each of these contests are available on our website at www.beefusa.org under the conventions and meetings tab. But we have a number of um, age groups and divisions, and they vary from each contest. Um, but we have something for everybody from like age nine mm -hmm. all the way up through the college age division. That's great. And last year you had some awesome prizes. So tell folks a little bit about uh, what people might win if they come and sure. participate in these. That's the best part is we offer cash awards mm -hmm. thanks to our generous sponsor, Farm Credit. So most of our competitions offer like $500 cash mm -hmm. for first place. And we also offer, you know, uh, cash awards for each of the team members as well. Mm -hmm. um, we um, have plaques and awards that go to them as well. And of course, they walk away with the bragging rights. That's absolutely right. Now, beyond contests, there are a lot of other things for young people to do at convention as well. Mm -hmm. Give folks a, an understanding of that. Well, we're happy to be partnering up with a few other groups this year mm -hmm. um, that will be having their annual conventions in conjunction with ours. The first is the National Block and Bridal Convention. Mm -hmm. And then the second one is the YBIC, or the Youth Beef Industry Congress. Both groups are going to be having their convention with ours, so a lot more young people at our convention. Well, it should be a great, great week for lots of young people and a neat opportunity for them to meet young people from all across the, the, the country. Oh, exactly. Well, thanks for coming to the show, Lori. I appreciate that. Thank you. Register now for the 2012 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's this February in Nashville, Tennessee. Just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us at beefusa.org. As our recent efforts on the Clean Water Act demonstrate, our industry needs a cohesive voice on the issues that affect our way of life. One veteran cattleman says greater involvement in state and national organizations help give us a more unified approach. Cattleman to Cattleman's Brad Bulla has more from North Dakota. It's always been an important part of our life, uh, living where we do with our Canadian neighbors to the north. We have a lot of friends and relatives. Gabe Thompson's family has lived in Antler, North Dakota, right next to the U.S. border with Canada for over a century. We're primarily a commercial cow-calf operation. We run Angus, uh, Slayer, and Maine and Jew Cross cattle in a uh, situation where we'll background our calves most years, almost every year, and on occasion we have been involved in retaining ownership and, and finishing cattle as well. Third generation uh, farmer rancher, uh, um, grandparents came over from Norway back at the turn of the century and, and we've built a, a grain and cattle operation and we're uh, carrying on in, in that tradition. And in northern North Dakota, that tradition is going through some dramatic changes. This is primarily um, farming country. If you are involved in the cattle industry up in this neck of the woods, it's because you really, really want to be. And uh, that, that's one of the unique challenges we face as well in, in being able to find ground that is available to run cattle on uh, as opposed to farming anymore. And we're on the eastern edge of of the oil industry really booming and there are a lot of instances here in North Dakota we see it where where the oil comes into into play and the livelihood of that has been dependent upon from making cattle is no longer necessary and and unfortunately we're seeing that in cattle numbers dropping and and producers exiting out of our industry 
But Gabe says being a cattleman has always meant rising to meet challenges. A lot of them have remained the same year after year, generation after generation. Um, one of the typical ones that we, we see more of now are the regulatory aspects that are coming down and whether that is from uh, government entities or private um, animal rights type of entities. It, the regulatory nature of, of the constraints that we're going to see coming at us is probably one of the largest issues that we'll be facing. Gabe's been director of the North Dakota Stockmen's Association for the past seven years. It's been an incredibly rewarding experience for me. Um, we have a, a exceptional group of people, cattlemen, that, that step up and, and, and volunteer their time and energy into directing our industry here in the state. And it will go down as probably one of the most um, satisfying and, and interesting things that we've, we've done here in our life. The experience has also strengthened his belief that cattlemen need to join state and national organizations, including NCBA. Our voice is slowly but surely being diminished. With each generation, we become farther and farther removed from society, and we need to be able to tell our story. And we need to be able to tell our story in a proactive way that, that many people can pick up on and understand. NCBA takes our, our local and state voices and expands them to a, a broad basis nationally and brings everything together to, to give us the ability to go to that higher level of telling our story outside of who we know around locally. The NCBA has been a long, long standing organization whose commitment to the livestock industry is really hard to argue. Gabe says social media has opened up the industry to a whole new world of consumers, allowing cattlemen to tell their story directly to the public, making a significant impact on how the market looks at beef. He's also amazed at how other new technologies are advancing the industry. My father grew up um, harnessing horses in the lantern light as a child and a couple summers ago we had a laser etching machine in our calving barn um, uh, scratching the zona of, of embryos prior to being transferred into, into a cow. And the changes that his generation have witnessed in agriculture is almost mind-boggling. Gabe is very attached to his community. Hundreds of friends from both sides of the U.S.-Canada border gather annually in his town for Antler Outlaws events that Gabe helps to organize, including a local ranch rodeo, trail ride, and steak cookout. Throughout my life, the people that I've met in the cattle industry have been some of the most true, genuine people that I've ever met. Um, it seems just to be the nature of your involvement in this industry. and. I guess we farm as well as ranch, but our true calling and, and enjoyment does come from the cattle side. Reporting from Antler, North Dakota, I'm Brad Bullifor, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Gabe Thompson is a member of NCBA. Please join him and the thousands just like him by calling 1-866-USA-BEEF or visiting us online at beefusa.org. Stay with us, we'll be right back. In that ring, buyers have an eye out for healthy, verified calves. Range Ready puts a document in hand, like a medical file for each animal, that lets buyers know what they're getting, and most importantly, what they're not. So, go on thinking your word carries all the weight. But in the sale barn, your proof is on this paper. Go on now. Take care of your cattle and they'll take care of you. Education, networking, opportunity, and fun. That's what you'll find at the 2012 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee. Get your ticket to ride with your fellow cattlemen and women in the country music capital of the world. You'll find cutting edge education, top of the line technology, and entertainment that can't be beat. 
Don't miss your Ticket to Ride to the Cattle Industry Annual Convention and Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee, February 1st through the 4th, 2012. For more information, visit BeefUSA.org. Welcome back. In the southern part of the United States, the drought continues. And this week, we're continuing our series on how Purina's sustained nutrition is helping farmers and ranchers cope. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Sharon Allseth has more from South Texas. We're a commercial uh, Brangus operation that uh, primarily focuses on seed stock and replacement females. We retain ownership in, uh, in our Brangus uh, steers through the feed yard and um, we rely on uh, a lot of artificial insemination um, for genetic improvement in our herd. Brandon says his operation puts a lot of thought and work into their genetics program and they want to safeguard that investment for the future. I truly believe that if we can protect the program that we've worked so hard to build, I think that that will actually step us up and, and uh, uh, make, us, make our genetics more uh, sought after in the, in the cattle that we raise. I think that our marketing opportunities um, are going to be really tremendous and um, I think with the, the future in the calf prices and, and uh, feeder calves and the fact that we have uh, generated um, so much effort in, into the genetics that, that we put into our cow herd uh, to perform in, in all levels, uh, I, I believe we'll, uh, we'll be protecting our investment and make our business much better. Over the years, Brandon has worked with his Purina representative on a long-term plan to aid in his cattle's fertility, reproduction, and growth by using the Purina Sustained Nutrition Program. Sustained nutrition is something that we've really focused on in the last few years because the fact of the matter is there's really good uh, research out these days that indicates that keeping that cow in a body condition score 5 to 6 on a year-round basis makes a lot of sense, not just from the health and the, and the growth of the calf after it's born, but some of the effects that we're seeing from the fetal fro programming side of things. If we take better care of that cow during pregnancy, that calf's got a better chance of being healthy and a better chance of growing optimally after it hits the ground. But by the same token, we're also thinking about the cow health and her performance as well. She's in better shape when she has that baby. She's gonna get up off the ground faster. The calf's gonna nurse quicker and she's also going to breed back faster when we try to breed her back the next time. Brandon's use of the sustained nutrition program is paying off in other ways as his operation and the rest of Texas endure historic drought. During a normal year the Wolf Point Ranch would get 40 to 45 inches of rainfall. So far this year we, we've gotten um, around five to seven inches so um, so we're definitely behind the, the, the our, our normal rainfall um, the, the growing conditions have been really tough and we've also gone through some extreme heat that we're not normally used to dealing with. Um, it's been a, a really big challenge for us and our cow herds and, and uh, have required us to take on different management practices. It, it takes a while to really figure out just how bad it is, but the fact of the matter is it's been bad for a while. So taking that into account, you have to make some pretty tough decisions. And really the approach that I've always taken when it comes to drought management is it's kind of a three-step process. Number one, cull your slackers. Get rid of the cows that really needed to probably go anyway. That's cows with bad bags, bad eyes, bad feet, bad attitudes. Though a cow that always tears the pins down, it's time for her to go. The other thing you do is you get rid of open cows. It doesn't make sense to feed open cows through a drought. It's, it's, it's too expensive if you're not going to get a return on that investment. The other thing is if you have to cull further, cull the cows that calve late call the cows that are always kind of at that last end. They're at the tail end of the calving season every time. They wean the lightest calves every time, and that just kind of perpetuates itself anyhow. Chance says operations coping with the drought should also start evaluating the size of their cows. And if forage is a limiting factor, they should consider using Purina's Accuration Forage Extender Program. It allows for us to substitute the forage they would normally be getting because we're actually adding roughage to our AccuRation product in that particular case. So now we're talking about a program that actually meets the cow requirement like it's supposed to so we can achieve sustained nutrition, but instead of them getting roughage from the pasture or hay, 
we can provide some of that roughage from the AccuRation product itself. Like here at Wolf Point, for instance, we're using the AccuRation Forge Extender program, which has worked really well to sustain nutrition on not only as cows, but as growing heifers and those sorts of things where we've got a forage shortage. One thing that we've really seen with the, uh, with the feeds is uh, the, our ability to, one, provide a, a constant uh, plane of nutrition. Uh, we've been able to rely on, their, uh, on the intake, on, on our, the intake modifiers. We've, um, we've been able to save labor, and uh, we've been able to protect our, our, uh, our investment into the, the growth of the genetics in our herd. We also have other programs that uh, it, if you do have some forage stored, whether it's stored pasture or whether it's hay that you've put together through the good years, you can continue to rely on the AccuRation Liquid program. Uh, to get by on that, which again, that's more of a supplementation program to your forage base if you've got the forage to do that. So it kind of just really depends on whether or not you have the forage through the drought. If you do, you can continue supplementation. If you don't, you need to institute substitution with a program like AccuRation Forage Extender. We'll return to Texas and hear more about Purina's sustained nutrition program after this. But stay with us. Purina's wind and rain minerals are research tested and field proven to provide balanced mineral nutrition essential for cattle health, growth, and reproduction. They're highly palatable so cattle consume what they need when they need it. And wind and rain mineral special formulation resists the elements so they won't blow out of the feeder and maintain their palatability even if they've been wet. Wind and rain cattle minerals from Purina Mills, building better cattle. Comprehensive, practical, powerful. Now's the time to put the power of DNA to work in your herd with the comprehensive Igenity Profile. The inside information from Igenity can help you make more confident replacement heifer and herd sire selection decisions, add marketability to your feeder cattle, make faster genetic progress, and more. The best time to get started is when you're already working cattle during branding, weaning, or bull soundness exams. Get started today. Visit iGenity.com or call 1-877-IGENITY to put the power of DNA to work in your herd. Welcome back. Let's return to South Texas and reporter Sharon Alseth, who's learning about drought management and Purina's sustained nutrition program. Along with overall herd management, the Purina programs are also helping Brandon save on labor costs. We run with fewer employees, so um, and using the um, uh, Purina's products with the um, with the intake modifiers and and uh, sustained nutrition's, we um, we feel really confident that whenever we take and and put bulk feed out in front of our cattle, that they're not, just not going to go in and overconsume. We um, also, I feel really confident that um, I can hit my targets uh, based on, on different products that we can use. Um, it's been a, a major labor, labor savings for us. If you have a good drought program that relies upon itself from a self-fed standpoint, then what you're really saying there is I can get my cows through this drought without having to get more labor to get these cows through the drought. The other piece of that is whatever self-filled program you institute during a drought needs to be predictable enough that it's going to keep them in a sustained nutrition state. Both Brandon and Chance say one of the important things to consider during a drought is whether your current management programs make sense for your operation. And what I mean by that is begin with the end in mind. Don't just start out by saying, well, I'm going to do this program and not really know what the end result's going to be. Any program that you put in place, nutritional program, genetic program, health program, needs to be predictable that you know what your investment is going to result in because input costs are too high today to shoot from the hip. So during these drought situations, it even kind of exacerbates that problem of shooting from the hip. You can no longer shoot from the hip. You need to make sure that every decision you make is a good business decision. Do your best to take the emotion out of it and think and begin with the end in mind. I, I don't know if I'm a step ahead of the, of the drought or not, but I do know in the planning that the, um, the Purina feeds have made it very easy for me to implement the feeds. Um, I feel real confident in uh, where we're going to go with this. 
Um, I, I've been a, a long term customer. We know the performance that we get out of the feed and um, the available availability of, um, of good resources right now, high quality and et cetera. Um, I know that I can provide a, a high quality uh, form of nutrition to our cattle that will allow us to, to move in deeper into the drought and hopefully at some point get this drought broke. Reporting from Port Lavaca, Texas, I'm Sharon Alseth for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Next week, we'll head to Armstrong, Texas to take a look at how sustained nutrition is working for another ranch. For more information about Purina Sustained Nutrition programs, visit our website at cattlemanthecattlemen.org. We'll be right back. Let's face it. You don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand. But at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls, never-ending chores. The unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W. Trusted. 70% of consumers want to know where their food comes from and how can we ignore them? IMI Global offers third-party audited source and age verification essential for export markets and specialty markets like natural, organic, omnivorous, Eskimo, or possibly recovering vegan certified. For quality and age producers, to the big boys, any cattleman who wants to expand his market, you're not just buying this green ear tag, you're buying peace of mind. IMIGlobal.com Louie used to buy horses for the feedlot. Whenever he'd find a good stout one that was deaf and looked like it could tread mud, he'd send it our way. I'd usually check them over, float their teeth, worm them, vaccinate them, and change their oil. Occasionally he sent one with no faults, but I was only there 10 years, so I never saw him. Feedlot number three called one morning to say Louie delivered a new horse to the feed yard. As I pulled up to the horse barn, I called Louie on the radio to ask about any peculiarities. I'd learned from past experience that they all arrived with a flaw of some kind, some minor, some fatal. Louie, what can you tell me about the new horse? Oh, you'll like him, Doc. Gentle as a puppy, sound, maybe 12 years old, a biggin, 16 hands, belonged to a little old lady who only rode him to the senior center once a week. I waited. Oh, by the way, he's a little hard to catch. In the first pen stood old Whitey. He had a gentle look in his eye. I walked right up to him. He backed off. I coaxed, wheedled, cooed, and clucked him round and round the corral. I finally ran out of patience, threw down the halter, and got out my rope. Now, although there are exceptions, most vets are not good rovers. It's like giving a typewriter to a cephalopod. I roped the post, the hay rack, the back rubber, the barn door, the two horses with him, and finally caught him astraddle the water tank. Years later, I still haven't learned my lesson. To this day, I carry a rope and act like I can use it. Dr. Huey, down in Tennessee, is smarter than me. He went out to look at a old tobacco farmer's sick calf. He's in the pasture, Doc. I'm busy, but you're young. You can catch him. Huey dug his rope out of the truck and started to swing it. He knocked the old man's hat off before he finally hung up on the pickup mirror. You any good with that? Asked the old man suspiciously. No, but it don't make any difference, says Huey. I charge a dollar a throw whether I catch him or not. The old man yelled over his shoulder, Leroy, get out there and catch that calf for the good doctor. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter. Let's take a look at this week's legacy photos from around the country.
Send us your farm and ranch photos. Check us out at cattlemantocattlemen.org or on Facebook by searching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. And congratulations to Cheryl Little of Sherwood, Arkansas. She won the checkoff funded National Beef Cookoff Grand Prize of $25,000 for her vegetable mango beef stir fry recipe. Now, Cheryl's winning recipe and other delicious beef dishes are available on our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Next week, what Congress is saying about our current economic challenges. Plus, a look at how a feed yard in the Lone Star State keeps its operations successful with conservation and humane practices. And, of course, the latest in news and market information. Well, that does it for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll see you back here next week on RFD-TV.